Do simple derivative problems work the same if we're dealing with complex functions as they do in Calc 1? More or less. We're going to do three simple examples here, um, and we're going to show that the derivatives all work out just the same way we expect them to from pre previous intuition from the real numbers. So the first example is a complex uh, function, which is just constant. Um, the, if the function f has the formula f of z equals k, a constant, then we can calculate the derivative fairly simply. f of f prime of z is going to be the limit as w approaches z of f of w minus f of z over w minus z, which, if the function is constant, can be rewritten the limit as w approaches z of k minus k over w minus z, which is the limit as w approaches z of 0, uh, which, of course, is 0. And so we get that the derivative of the constant function is 0, as expected. Things aren't much harder in the case of a linear function, but we need to verify that our definition is correct. So um, let's calculate the derivative of this linear function in example 2. The function's formula is mz plus b. So we'll calculate the limit as w approaches z of mw plus b minus mz plus b over w minus z. Little algebra on the top allows us to simplify to the limit as w approaches z of mw minus mz over w minus z, which is now the limit as w approaches z of the constant function m, which of course is m. This is a reassurance that our definition still works. Um, the derivative of a linear function mz plus b is m. Notice that the second example actually includes the first example because we can take m to be 0, and then this linear function is the constant function b, which has the derivative 0. Um, for the third example, we're going to calculate the derivative of the parabola. Um, and you'll see that it works out just exactly the same as it does in any Calc 1 course. So f of f prime of z is the limit as w approaches z of uh, w squared minus z squared over w minus z. And now perhaps this is working out a little bit better than in a standard Calc 1 course, because in, in a usual Calc 1 situation, we have x plus h squared here. But because we're using this more symmetrical definition, we don't have to multiply out this square. Arguably, our life is no easier because now we have to factor the difference of two squares anyway. Um, but never mind that. So w plus z, w minus z, factoring the difference of two squares, w minus z. And then, of course, we'll cancel these terms. So that's the limit as w approaches z of w plus z. Um, I'm going to split this limit. But I want you to be aware here that when I split this limit of a sum, what I'm using is a sum law for limits. And unless you're watching the videos out of order, we haven't proven the sum law for limits. And so you should question this for now. Um, so here I'm going to split this limit. This is the limit as w approaches z of w plus the limit as w approaches z of z. And now as w approaches z, w approaches z, so we get z. And as w approaches z, this is a constant from the point of view of the approach of w towards z. And so we get z plus z, which is 2z. So what we see here is that the derivative of z squared is 2z, even though this is a complex value function. All other simple polynomial examples work the same way. Um, and of course, the algebra can get a little bit more complicated. So we should expect that. Other examples work the same way. Now, in a complex analysis course, we're not going to do example after example after example. We're going to try to build up some basic machinery that will allow us to state general theorems about the rest of the examples. But I wanted to illustrate a few of the easy cases here. Now, some more interesting examples that might be better than polynomial examples to illustrate the power of the derivative might be sine z or cos z or e to the z. Now, those functions are. Um, well, we're not in a position to differentiate those functions right now, not because we don't have the power of the derivative, but because we don't yet have the power to actually define those functions. We know how to take the square or the quotient uh, of various complex numbers. What we don't know is we don't know how to calculate the sine or cosine of a complex number. We don't even know at this point what that would mean. 
And so we cannot even imagine uh, the derivative of sine being cosine in this context or the derivative of e to the z being e to the z in this context. We can't imagine that until we define what e to the z would mean for a complex number z. So we won't get to, get to that until later. But when we do get to it, you'll be happy to hear uh, that the formulas will work out as we expect and the derivative of sine, sine z will be cos z. So that's good news. All right, thanks.